Hello, good day, and welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at Python and how you structure our application in Python. I assume that we have some application, we have a few requirements, and we're thinking like, okay, how would I structure that in these different languages? And Python pretty much gives you the same thing that you've seen in Go and Java. And we want we have this application. We want to break it up into like a UI package and a storage package and a compute package. And you know, previously we we're using a common package to put like our main and stuff. And we can still sort of do that in Python. We'll have to modify our application, the, the, the library path where Python look for modules and stuff. And so I didn't want to mess with that. So when the example code, you're going to see me sort of get rid of the common directory and just put my main stuff in the application directory. But it's not a big deal. It's just so I didn't want to mess with the paths for where to look for common stuff, make things simpler for us. And of course, like I said, Python has the idea of not only packages that you can break up the application, but you can have soft packages. And then of course, modules, which are going to be the individual files within a package. Now, just to recap, this is all this stuff is basically for reuse. And so your source wise, you're going to have Python files. You can put them into modules. Basically, you can write a Python file as the application. If you want to break that up, just create multiple Python files, import those as modules. If you want to create packages, just take those Python module files, stick them in a directory. And there's something you have to do in a directory for it to be recognized as a package. We'll see that. But other than that, yeah, that's it. Um, Python kind of pre-compiles your uh, module file when you import them into this py.c file. Um, I'm, I haven't done a ton of stuff in Python, honestly. I know that oh, I'm trying to install a Python application. There's this thing of an egg. Which, so I don't know if that's really from the Python. Um, people who do the Python language or just the community came up with some other way of packaging application. But I haven't tried to do any of that stuff. I just try to stick to what's come with the language and what it gives you sort of out of the box. So just to recap is that you can have your source file, put them in packages. Each package could be, you know, made up of module files and of course subdirectories and sub packages, which would be sub packages. And then is your py file is basically a module file. And then those get compiled, um, into that pyc. Okay. But you don't have to really do anything special. So don't even worry about the command to use to do that. And we're not going to be asking with make files or anything. All right. So in terms of if you have some, Whatever your package path is, just like so Java has a class path, Python has this path that you can modify and by default, it uses the current directory and where Python is installed and some other directories and look for modules and packages from those directory. So you can modify it to look somewhere else, but let's just assume that you already have these paths set and you had in one, let's say path one, you write a py and that contains some stat functions and whatever else. You can just say import UI and then now you can use UI that to access the functions or whatever is defined in that um, UI.py class. So that would be the example of using a module. If you have something more like a package, you have a directory and then this is what I was talking about. You have this underscore underscore init underscore py file and I tell Python that that's a package directory. And that file could be empty or you can have some stuff also in for us because our stuff is simple. We're going to put our code in there instead of our separate files, but you can also have other files, which would be the module files within that package, just like how you can have in path three UI text and then simple that PY. And you can see you can import that module out of that pack in that package. All right. So let's jump into the code. And so because Python code is probably closest to the Go code, I'm going to start by um, copying the Go code um, as a starting point, renaming the Go file, and then my UI directory, I'm just going to call it AAUI, I'll just call it UI. And then, like I said, I'm going to move um, the files out to my common directory and just put it in the, the directory itself. And that's just so I don't have to mess with the path. And then I don't need the common directory anymore. But all the other subdirectories, a UI storage compute, I still have those to represent packages within my application. All right, so nothing changed there. So now I can go ahead and start modifying things. And so in Python, a function is defined by using the def keyword, uh, we have to change the type of comment because it's no longer a forward slash, but let's make sure that at least this work. And so if we run that, we'll see that it doesn't run. That's because I've defined a function called main and there's nothing to call main. And so Python is a little bit weird here with your main. Any Python file can be run. None of them is any more special than the other. But if you wanted to make something stand out as like the entry point or something, or what should be get, what should be where things should start, well, then you have to run this test where you check and see is this file that's being executed my main? And basically, um, if a file is being executed, its name gets assigned as underscore underscore main. So that's what I'm checking for. I'm checking to see. And so if you have a different Python file and you try to execute that, Python will also set its name to main. But, but if you import a file as a package, 
then that file name underscore underscore name gets the name of the, the, the um the file the package right or the module uh if that seems a little confusing don't worry, confusing don't worry but if we're not going to spend too much time on python right so like i said i'm going to make other.py a module and all i'm going to do for that is define a function and i have this function print out some import other and then now when i run it um well okay i need um to pass a parameter to my get user input and I can say none and you can see it works. So this is very simple as you can see how easy it is for me to write a module. Um, so I've already broken up my application by having two files, right? I have main.py, other.py. So you can imagine that oh, I've just split my code already and just, just by using this module, other.py, I import it using the name of the py file and then I was able to use it. Okay. So that acts like a namespace right there. So I want to do something more. So let's go to our UI.py um, file and that's in our, this UI directory. And I want to treat this UI directory like a package, like I said, and here I can have multiple, um, that PY file, which would be modules within this package, right? And so I'm going to create a class and it doesn't really matter how Python does classes and all that stuff. When we get the wrong to talking about classes, which we will, we have a chapter on classes and we're going to call it oh, object oriented program is done in the different languages. We'll come back and revisit this. So this is not the time to, to talk about it. But now I want to import, um, you know, like this class, let's say. But for now, what I'm going to do is create an alias for this UI import. And what I want is I'm just going to actually define a test function to show you how I can um, import this um, package and then have access to the function in this package. And so I'm going to have this test UI prompter function, which basically just create a UI prompter object initialize it as default and try to use it. And you notice that, oh, I can't really use this right now. That's because I have to say that this directory is a package. And the minute I had this underscore in it, underscore py file, notice how that test UI function was available to me, whereas before it wasn't. And so now um, Python has just treated my two parameters here as a tuple. So I'm just going to um, instead use the string format method to um, print out a value instead. So, all right. So that's pretty simple. So now that this seems to work, now I could go ahead and start um, doing some more things. And so I don't really need um, this file for my class. I'll just put my class inside the underscore py. Like I say, you can have multiple files in your package, but since we only have a little bit of code, I'll just put it in the init um, py class. You could think of the in init py file. You could think of the underscore init underscore py for each package as sort of like initialization file that when that pack package is imported, that file gets run. And we're going to see a similar capability in um, Go, actually. So anyway, so I'm back now to inside my UI package. I have a sub package called text. And here I want to import, of course, UI prompter from my parent package and create a text prompter that inherits from that. So whatever capabilities UI prompter has, I want text prompter to have those same capability. Everything in Python is space indented. So I have to make sure that I have the right spaces, the right spaces in terms of indentation. Um, I don't need to use curly braces. Um, it's just print. And so I'm going to return zero for my functions. I don't need type. And so this should be good enough. I'm just use lowercase, sort of make them more like Python code more so than the Go code that we um, took it from. So I'm going to say from the UI, that text package, right? So I'm saying this sub package text from the UI package. I want to be able to get the text prompter and use that. Um, so now we can see that oh, everything is working once I fix it up, everything is working. And um, we can imagine that I do the same thing for the storage package. Um, and basically, we can go along this path of breaking up our application. So again, notice that you have pretty much the same sort of thing. The code look a little bit different. But other than that, it's, you know, it doesn't give you the capability of breaking up stuff. Um, so that's pretty much it for this section. Um, nothing too exciting, um, except what we really looked at in this chapter is how you can break up applications in the different, um, your application in different languages. And of course we see it though, some of them are very different, but in a way they sort of still resemble each other. I mean, of course you have different functions you have to call or different um, programs you have to call to compile or link or all that stuff we had to do in C++ or even in Java to create a jar file and you had a separate compilation step and so on. Um, Python and Go seems to be like the easiest in terms of doing a lot of heavy lifting for you. You don't really have to do too much. Just put your code in some that subdirectory and it sort of figured it out. Um, but all that is why we're doing this to just compare across languages. Follow me on Twitter. Um, that's Straversity1. Um, Instagram is Straversity. Um, take care. See you in the next video. Um, thanks for your time. Bye.